to those survivors of the El Paso shooting. There are truly no words of comfort or security when you've lost family or when you've survived from such a malicious attack. There's truly nothing anyone can really say to you but just give condolences and grievances um, and their support. This channel is focused on bringing awareness and mental health is something that I should have definitely revisited a long time ago. Um, I want to touch on mental health as it relates to gun control and how we confuse the two to kind of curb some of um, what's going on today. Um, these are just solutions from my channel. This is by no means the uh, answer per se. Okay, so what I'm suggesting is a mental health check for bulk ammo buys. I am also suggesting a mental health check for bulk and arms buys. Okay, a good question to ask would be what current event sparked this upgrade in your weapons purchase? Now, the best thing to do is have someone to professionally analyze whether the person's weapon purchase is based on, like, straight hysteria or logic. Okay? Hysteria, for me, is a person who would be looking to buy more guns based on an uptick of migrants moving into their location or upgrade or uptick in black Americans moving into their um, location and them feeling afraid of that when there hasn't been an actual physical threat. Now, there are many of us today who do not agree with illegal immigration, but by no means do we support people going out, picking up arms and killing people. We have a president who is representing us on this issue, and that's where we need to give our support so we do not need to pick up arms. And if um, the person, the professional who will be analyzing the people who are making these purchases will be able to determine if this person is purchasing more ammo and guns out of a f unnecessary fear, or unvalidated fear, that could stop that purchase. If a person says, I seen somebody hanging around the neighborhood that don't belong here and I feel like I need to get more guns, that's a reason to restrict that buy and place a red flag and make sure that these people who come forth to buy guns in bulk with these hysterias are flagged and treated. Logical explanations for, for uh, bulk gun purchases should be from people who own shooting ranges, gun collectors in some situations, small business, cash businesses, and businesses that deal with large sums of cash. I can give you an example. In the hip-hop industry, you have a lot of jewelers. They become known overnight because their names are put in videos. Their images are in videos. And now everyone knows that these people walk, you know, to see their clients with at least $20 million in merchandise on them. So there's the person that might want to um, have ammo and guns in bulk. Let's just say that their revenue increases from $50 million to $200 million, million a year and they decide they want to hire employees to go around and do their work, and they just cater to their, you know, their higher paying customers. Those people that go out need to be protected as well. They will need guns, they will need ammo. If you're dealing in a cash business and you have a small business, you will need guns, you will need ammo because you will, make, you will be making large cash deposits into the banks. And if you're going to have staff and you're going to rely on them to make these deposits, they should be licensed and armed as well. 
Another example, and this is an example that we don't want to occur, but if it does, this would be a reason for people to buy guns in bulk and ammo in bulk. A government issued warning telling its citizens that they need to purchase arms and ammo to protect their families. And this will be on the basis that our military and our police force will be depleted in so many areas that they would not be able to protect you. So if you got that instruction from the government, that would be a reason for you to increase your purchases and ammo and firearms. Now, if none of the reasons above fit people looking to buy in bulk firearms and ammo, then they should not be allowed to purchase them. Again, you always want to have someone analyzing the people who are buying these guns in bulk and what are their explanations you have people who lose guns every year and the gun doesn't turn up until someone is murdered those people need to be held accountable there's no way in the world a gun just fell out of your pocket you were out jogging and your gun just fell out and you had no idea that your gun was gone the gun that you keep in the lockbox. These gun shows and gun dealers, they need to be held accountable for who they're selling to, how many they're selling to. Is there someone on site to, to give out mental health awareness and outreach at these gun shows? So those are just some solutions and steps that we all can consider and think about and pose to our government. Here's something else that we can do, and that's listen to each other. A lot of Americans, including myself, do not like what's going on with illegal immigration. That is why we elected President Trump, because he promised to do something about it and even though Democrats are blocking at every direction, he is still fighting and trying to do all that he can. Because all we want is immigration reform done in a common sense way. That's what we want. And there's nothing racist about that. And we have to listen to everyone, whether you agree with them or not. We have to learn to listen to each other. You're not going to like things that you hear. Just don't like it. Learn how to embrace it and just say, okay, hey, well, I disagree and let it go. White people are a part of society. I know my history. You understand? I know my history. I know the history of this country. But what I won't do is sit around and be like, white people this and white people that and white people this and white supremacy that. When I know for a fact that these white people that people are talking about have nothing to do with what's going on with us it's the whites in the government it's the people who have the wealth and the power are the ones who are making up the laws and policies that affect us so if we're going to sit around and talk about white supreme let's start naming the people's names i said that before because when you sit down and you keep talking about white supremacy white people did this white people's evil white people's the devil they hear that shit and some of these white folks are not built to hear all of that. You have white people out here who listen to that, and they're like, huh. They, some of them laugh at it. Some of them may be offended by it, and they just like, screw you. Some of them, it may fit them. They know it's true, and they're like, oh, well, what you going to do about it? And then you have those that are mentally weak. And every time they hear white supremacy or white devil, and what, they get fed up, and they say, you know what, I'm going to go out and do something about it. And usually what they decide to do about it is go out, get a gun and fire it into whoever so we have to learn to listen to each other black people we have our complaints no nope, we and we're going to keep talking about them 
But let's get realistic and start pointing the fingers at the people who are making these policies and making these um, rules and regulations and piling up all this red tape. Let's start pointing more at those people as per just saying the white, white people. When they reveal themselves, when George Zimmerman and all these people calling the police, when they reveal themselves, those are the ones you could target. You can get their names and you say their names. Call them by their names. Mary such and such, the one who called the cops on the um, little boy talking about he felt on her behind when he didn't. It was just an accident. And even after that, she still would not apologize after she humiliated this boy. Okay, she's a white racist. Because even when she was proven wrong, she still didn't apologize. So she's a person you look at as a white racist. When you see her, she's a white racist. When they do stuff, those are the ones you can put. You say, you see them right there? That's the white racist. When they reveal themselves. And oftentimes when they reveal themselves, nobody does anything. But, they, but everybody keeps rambling on about white supremacy, white supremacy. But when the people do stuff and you know who they are, nothing happens to them. So it's really, to me, it's useless and stupid to keep talking about white supremacy this and white supremacy that when you're not doing nothing about it. That's why I talk about Clinton. That's putting myself at risk. But that's why I talk about Hillary Clinton. That's why I talk about Joe Bidens and these different and, and uh, the Blasios and the uh, all of them, Democrat and Re Republican McConnells. I'll talk about those people. You know why? Because they in power. They're the ones making up these rules to get you arrested, to put you in these groups when you've done nothing but been boisterous, but they want to get you locked up for being boisterous. And that's not exclusive to black people. They locking up a lot of people for expressing themselves. It's not just us. So these are the people that we need to keep our focus on because by focusing on all this white supremacy and the white people that and the white devil and the mayonnaise and saying all of that stuff, you distracting from the real people that's really doing stuff, they getting away with it. All of our attention needs to be focused on government. Because when government puts laws in place that says, hey, you can't touch these people in a certain way, you can't do that, then when they do it, they'll get punished for it. But arguing back and forth and calling them all these names is not doing nothing but getting more of us killed. Because you inciting these lunatics because these people are lunatics. And they can't, they're not built for you saying all of this stuff. So they go out and they pick up a gun. We definitely have to be more tolerant of each other. Nobody's telling you kumbaya and all, you know, everybody going to move in together and everybody going to hold hands. Nobody is telling you. I'm not suggesting that. But I'm suggesting that we word our grievances to the, the right people. Let's word our grievances in the way where it's targeting the people who make the policies, the people who have the power. That's where we want to focus our attention on. So that we, at least we, won't be targeted as much. Because I don't, I don't want us to be in the bunches, the, the white supremacy bunch, and we got to get them. For what? Because a lot of us are against illegal migration ourselves. Mental health, mental health awareness. We need it in every state. Every state, we need an overhaul of mental health clinics, hubs, pamphlets, exercises. People need places to go just to yell and scream. People need places to go to just let off some steam, you know, to break stuff. I thought that was a great idea. I seen that on a show where you can go into this house and people were just letting loose. And I'm like, we need more of those where people can just go and kind of break things and just, you know, destroy something and get that frustration and that that stress and all of that anger that they feel inside out before they hurt somebody these teachers i am so sick of these damn teachers pretending like they don't know the students who have problems and them not doing enough to get these students uh, um, away from other students and getting them the help that they need in the environment that they should be in 
because these schools are busting at the seams, especially public schools. I don't give a damn what neighborhood it's in. You getting, um, even if you're in a better zip code, you are seeing more and more kids come into those classrooms. And that teacher, you know, they hear this stuff, they ignore it. They ignore it. They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to get involved. And that has to stop. When you see these students making these kind of threats or they're being signaled out for something, you have to get somebody in there to resolve that situation quickly. Mental health, we need those hubs in schools too because a lot of those places take, uh, a lot of these shootings take places on uh, college campuses and high schools. You know? So we need to have mental health. That has we have to we have to do these things. If we want to save ourselves, we're gonna to have to do these things. To hell with a green new deal. We need a mental health new deal. That's what we need. Okay. So like I said before, the killings will not stop. You can take all the guns away. The Democrats can say, oh, we're gonna take every gun off the street. People will not stop killing each other. Stabbings are up in the Bronx. Stabbings are up in the Bronx. So what are they going to say? Take the knives, okay? They're going to get some sticks. They're going to take the sticks. People going to set each other on fire. People going to make Molotov cocktails. People going to find a way to kill. Get to the source. Like Again, like Mary Ann Williamson said, get to the source. She acknowledged it about the Democratic Party. They do not like to deal with the core issues of what's creating the problems get to the source mental health awareness a month is not enough it needs to be yearly so i'm very very guys i like to bring awareness through conversation in hopes that it sparks change um rest in peace again to um all the people who lost their lives i feel terrible um and the people who have survived i hope that they you know regain their strength and they're, you know, able to put this behind them somehow. Okay, guys, and I'm out.